We've got big bars and ported heads with race cams, a different exhaust. Woo! We're going crazy with the CRF300L. So we're gonna dig back into it and see if we can squeeze even more power out of this thing. But what will be the downfalls and will we affect the reliability? I wasn't planning originally to do any more performance stuff to this bike, but then I ran into Ari Henning at the Revzilla Get On ADV Fest. Well, we got talking. <laughs> Things happen. Before we get into all that though, I think it's important that we take a quick look at where this engine is right now. First of all, what's been done to this thing? We've removed all the emissions, opened up the air box on both ends, changed the filter, high flow exhaust, just basically let the thing breathe better. Set of CBR cams and custom tuning the power vision from DynoJet on there. I wanna focus in on two aspects about that power and reliability. As far as power is concerned, I thought we were actually gonna mess things up and lose a bunch of bottom end and pick up a bunch of top. Oddly enough though, we've hardly picked up any top end, any noticeable, but had huge gains down low with all the mods we've done. There's points in the RPM range where it's almost twice as much power as it had before, but we just couldn't seem to squeeze out any more top end power. Now I will say I have not retested the bike or retuned it since putting the CBR air boot in, and I do believe that gave it a good extra snap up top. I know a lot of y'all are gonna beat me up for this. You want me to retune the bike and or re at least redyno it and see where it's at. It's just not super convenient for me to do that. Uh, in fact, when I have to get this thing retuned at the end of all this mods we're about to do, it's gonna require me to probably do some traveling. Those modifications I did, while we didn't quite get the result initially I was looking for, it's actually really great right now. That throttle response is way better than it was before. Having that much low end is actually this is a great little engine as far as power is concerned. Now let's talk about reliability. One of the big things that makes this bike so cool what it is, is the fact that, well, it's cheap and very reliable. And I can say that the modifications we've done should not have affected the reliability. Now all the bolt-on stuff on the outside that just allows the engine to breathe better, coupled with the custom tuning, should not affect reliability. There might be some out there that would make the argument that, well, it's making more power, therefore it's less reliable. I would say on the same end, you could argue that, well, when it breathes better, especially through the exhaust side of things combined with proper tuning, that the engines actually tend to run a little cooler. But either way, we're talking about little fractions of difference, if any at all. We did go into the engine when we put the CBR cams in, but you remember this engine, all the components in the head were exactly the same as the CBR. So those cams were a direct drop and no, nothing goofy there. And the CBR has the exact same maintenance or intervals as this engine. Technically, yes, we may have a little quicker valve train wear, but it get we're within factory reliability. So in other words, we've done a good job of increasing power, maybe not the way we thought we would, but honestly still really great. And we're basically still factory reliable. And where we're gonna go, could possibly screw all that up. But before we go any further, let me address some comments I've been getting lately, which is just how amazing and wonderful the skin on my face has been looking. I know, it's amazing, but listen guys, I gotta come clean, it's not been on my own. Thanks to Teach Hanley, the sponsor for today's video. Uncomplicated skincare. Oh, I had this all organized better. For, for men, you know, being a motorcycle mechanic, people think you're like some wizard. It's literally just reading directions is like 90% of it. If you can read directions, you can be a motorcycle mechanic. Well, guess what? If you can read directions, you can take care of your face now too. They've made it incredibly easy at Teach Hanley. They've got simple step-by-step -step directions to tell you exactly what to do and when to do it. And guess what? The bottles themselves tell you too. It says daily wash, AM, PM, two times per week, exfoliating, wash, they look they tell you exactly what to do. Now they've got a number of different systems, but we would suggest you start with level one. That'll give you a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime, a twice per week exfoliating scrub, AM morning face moisturizer with SPF 20. We are motorcyclists after all. And a PM scrub, which will help keep your face moisturized through the night. And having used this for a while, my skin feels great. And they've helped many others as well. They've got over 5,000 five-star reviews. And members of Teach Handley get all kinds of benefits, including 20% off retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, hauls are canceled at any time, and free US shipping and low cost shipping to most other countries. And for my subscribers, Teach Hanley is offering us a really great deal, 30% off your first box, plus a free gift when you click the link in the description. So click the link and get started today. First, let's take a quick look at the actual parts that are gonna go on during this build. The piston from JE Pistons. Harry worked with them to develop this piston. It's gonna do a couple cool things for us. It's gonna bump the compression a little bit and increase the bore a little bit. We'll talk more in depth about that in a moment, but I just wanna give you a quick rundown of these parts. It's a forged piston, and it's gonna increase our engine size all the way up to 301 cc's. That's right, it's a one cc big bore kit. <laughs> uh, the actual size of this engine is a 286, so this is a little bigger bump than you might think it is, and it'll bump the compression a little bit. This is the balance, though. This is the thing you wanna to talk to someone like him who's raced these engines, had them towards red line all day around a track. I'm just showing the piston right here. There's also a little box with the rings and the wrist pin and everything else, and I have some gaskets, but I don't have a cylinder. 
And that is kind of interesting. With this engine, you actually have a steel sleeve inside. I, I was shocked when I heard that. I've already found a local person who knows what they're doing. We're gonna bore that out. It's only gonna cost me about 80 bucks for boring it. It's gonna gap the rings. Let's talk about this head right here, this black cylinder head. What is this thing? Well, this came off one of his race engines, apparently, and this is a fully ported head. It gets off the CBR, but it doesn't matter. We'll bolt right on, it's all the same. The intake side is really noticeable. And you know what we'll do, when we pull the other head off, and I actually have them side by side, I'll shine a light there, and we'll look at them side by side and really check them out. But it's been nice and opened up. It's been all re-cleaned up, it looks great. Hey, look at this right here, it's so cleaned up inside here. He even wrote the, wrote, he wrote the valve clearances down right there. <laughs> These cams, though, are from Takawaga. Takawaga. Tak Takawaga. I believe these are Japanese. These are even more aggressive cams than the CBR cams. But interestingly enough, we're still on stock valve springs, so they're not even really that much more aggressive. I'm almost wondering if it's more of a timing thing. They don't look a whole heck of a lot more aggressive, and I'm literally just looking. That's pretty hard to tell. That's definitely going to breathe a little better. So obviously, we had a good bit of conversations about case uses with these bikes, and if I'm going to be, you know, essentially, I told them, I don't want to hurt my reliability? Am I going to be okay with this, this head, with these cams, with everything else? And you know, he said basically, I would move up your vowel checks, you know, a bit, but it shouldn't be anything too crazy or radical. In other words, he believes that both of these parts shouldn't just destroy the reliability of this bike. Another thing you see sitting up here on the table is this. A Yoshimura exhaust. I have the full system. It's not just the can. I know we have our Black Widow exhaust on there, but I do believe this will make a little extra umph, and I'll explain why in a second. We actually had this Yosh on order for like nearly a year before it showed up. I thought we just canceled it once I got the Black Widow, but I guess uh, it was still in order. Uh, thank you, Revzilla. They set me up with this. Thing. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think this one looks as good as the uh, as the Black Widow. I think the Black Widow looks better. I can do all this with the engine in the frame, right? It doesn't need to come out. However, I kind of want to change the color of the frame. I'm not really a huge fan of the silver on there. It's not horrible, but it's literally doesn't even seem like it's powder coat. It almost seems like it's really thin paint. I'm just getting sick of having to touch it up everywhere. It's already got probably a half can of, of silver rail can on it now. It matches great, but. Let's just go ahead and change the color and put a proper thick coat on there. So we're gonna strip this thing all the way down and we'll run down to we coat it and we'll get it coated. We also may change some other things on here like the graphics, I've, I've been considering doing that. And there's a few things on the frame too while I have it apart I wanna fix, some few points I wanna weld. I'm considering maybe adding some small handles to the rear because there's not really an easy way to grasp the rear of the frame and move it. Hey, why not, you're gonna be in there. So yes, this is gonna take place over a handful of videos because it's a lot to be done. Let's look a little bit deeper into some of those parts We'll go over to the board and talk about it. So here we have our happy little piston, a crankshaft. Crankshaft's going this way, the piston goes up, then it comes down, blah, blah, blah. And when you hear of an engine size, we're talking about two numbers, the bore and the stroke. The stroke has to do with the crankshaft here and how basically far up and down the piston moves. For instance, if the piston moved up and down as far as this line is, right? This was the deepest it went, this was the highest it went. And then you increase that, you would increase the overall volume, right? Because you'd have more distance traveled pulling in more air and fuel. And that's your stroke. The other number is the actual size of the piston itself, which is a nice little circle, right? And you've got this size, and let's say you go bigger. Well, bigger is more volume. Larger piston, more volume, more bangity boom booms, right? More power, baby. But of course, it's not just that simple and straightforward. As you go larger with your piston, there's a bigger circle, the more chance it has to do called piston slap. Just imagine you had a big cylinder with a circle exact, like nearly the exact same size, and you're trying to push it through at a point right in the center, and that point can already flex anyway. So your piston, if it's too large, will start to wobble around in there, and it's gonna cause increased wear. Now, this is one of the reasons we're only going up to a 301. I think there's some other pistons out there you can get that'll take it up to a 320 something, even almost a 350. Ari first told me the kit that he has takes it up to a 301. I was immediately like, ah, oh, come on, we can go bigger than that, right? What about like a, a 325 or something? Quickly told me, no, if you want to keep it reliable, don't go any bigger than that. In this engine, just the way it's set up, and it's a whole other things we could talk about, rod length, skirt size, blah, blah, blah. You can only usually manipulate a few of those numbers in a factory engine. There's just too many other things in there you're not gonna be able to touch. If we go larger than that, it will wear itself out. I actually did a little bit of digging into that, found videos or uh, Reddit things where people were talking about going to that bigger size pistons. Uh, there's several examples of the old 250Ls where people went to some of those bigger size pistons. And yeah, the engine got eaten up in almost no time. So you wanna keep it reasonable, you don't wanna to go too big. You remember, this is a guy that races these things, had him at Redline all day, done a lot of hard riding on these engines. He says, 
to go that big. I know it's only a 301, but hey, remember it's a 286 stock. Also, we're gonna increase the compression, like I said, a little bit. It's gonna go from this to this. This is where balance is really important. Some engines, just the way they're set up, you can get away with huge big bore kits and they're just fine. And some you can just do a little bit. Remember too, some of those people with the old 250Ls that have them blowing up, that's what the 250L crank. With a stroker crank, we have even more piston travel at higher speeds. For instance, if you had 5,000 RPMs on a 250L and 5,000 RPMs on the CRF300L, the piston's moving faster in the CRF300L because of the increased stroke. Here's my cylinder, okay? I, I've worked on this for way longer than I want to talk about. It's just like half of it. Let's say this is the exhaust side. That looks a little more like an exhaust port anyway, I guess. You got your camshaft here. It's like an oblong egg-shaped thing, and it's gonna push down on the valve, opening this valve up, letting the exhaust, in this case, the exhaust gas is out. The bigger this lobe is, the more we're opening the door, if you will, or the longer we are, or where the timing is. There's a lot of elements in there. Dictate sort of what kind of power, performance, and engine characteristics you're gonna have. Another thing in here is the port itself. If we were to take this port, and make it bigger. You should have more flow. Well, kind of, that's a very complex thing in its own deal. If we just crank those ports to the max, we might make really good power like top RPM right before a red line, but not really anywhere else. So porting a cylinder head is a really interesting thing where it's almost a science and an art kind of mix, I feel like. It's really neat to hear engine builders get into that and talk about what they like to do. You open a hole, it'll port too much, it, the flow becomes almost turbulent. You gotta find a good mix there. It's almost like you may have heard of, oh, like you put a three inch exhaust on a Honda Civic. You're probably actually gonna lose power. It's too large of an exhaust for that size of an engine. Similar with the ports in the head. We don't wanna overdo those. Something I did ask everybody, I said, hey, is this head gonna actually be good for like all around power? And he's like, yeah, pretty good mixes. I mean, even in race bikes, they don't typically just blast them out like that. You do want good power throughout the rev range. The camshafts, hiking one that has more aggressiveness to it, more openings and everything else. Sometimes those require stiffer valve springs and you start kind of getting a bit of an accelerated wear throughout the valve train. Again though, this cam is not aggressive enough apparently to even require stiffer springs than what it came with. I mean, Ari says he just ran stock valve springs in it. He did not have valve flow. Again, somebody ran these engines near redline all day. That makes me feel a little better about running those, those cams. I don't think we'll have too many issues with them. But again, we could. It's a bit of a mystery right now, so <laughs> stay tuned. Regardless though, the combination of those two things should definitely increase the engine's ability to pull air and fuel in and explode and bang, bang, boom, boom, and make the, make the bike do wheelies. Oh, the exhaust, let's talk about that real quick. So the bottom here is gonna be our Black Widow, and this is gonna be our Yosh. No, I know. Let me explain what exactly what I'm trying to show here. The black point up into here on both of them is, let's just essentially say it's the same. Technically, the piping in the Yosh is a little bit bigger, but I highly doubt that'll actually make any real difference. What I'm more interested in is the end where we go into the baffle. The kind of goofy thing with the Black Widow is once the exhaust hits the can, it dumps into this massively big baffle. And that's what I'm trying to show the walls are, not the whole can itself, just the baffle. I think they do this so that they can make the same cans that work on basically all of their bikes. And that's going to cause all kinds of odd turbulences. Not the best. Also, it makes the can really, really loud without the baffle in. I have to run the baffle at all times. And even with that, it's still kind of way too loud. I like the Black Widow. It looks like it's well made. I like some features about it, like how the heat shield goes on it. I don't want to beat them up because Black Widow did send me this exhaust and initially I was very happy with it but I have come to see that this can is not the best. I could live with it, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I do have the ocean. Here's something cool about it. The transition from the exhaust into the baffle is exactly the same, all the way out to the end cap, which means we're gonna have much better flow represented by orange dashes because I'm, you know, Leonardo da Vinci. This Yosh is just going to simply flow a little bit better because of that. I'm sorry, Black Widow. I love the exhaust. It looks better. It does. I'm sitting here looking at it right here behind me. It's a good, I love how that exhaust looks on there. Also, the Yosh is probably going to sound a little better. It's going to have a more traditional dirt bike sound. Right now, to me, this bike has got, it's got a bit of a brap, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't quite sound right. I think anyone's heard it, especially in person kind of knows what I'm saying. It just sounds loud, you know, like it doesn't quite brap like it should. So. Yoshimura exhaust. These modifications are going to require some retuning of the bike. And I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to do that yet. Uh, Followed this build before, you know, there was a little bit of some issues with getting the bike custom tuned. Uh, hopefully, I, I hope I can still find someone local that can do it so I don't have to like travel, but there are possibilities. I don't think I'll have to go all the way out to Vegas again. <laughs> Y'all want to hear an exhaust test, by the way? Mm -hmm. 
Did it make a difference? I'll try to get a base map from Ari. I know he's done one of these kits on a rally. He didn't have the head though and the cams. So I'll probably have to just take that map and fatten it up a bit just for safety sakes. And we can do some print, print, like some little running around just to make sure everything's good and happy before we get out to the dyno, maybe get the first oil change through it then get the tuning super squared away. I also need to make sure things like the clutch isn't gonna slip. Maybe when I have the engine out, I'll actually take this part and show y'all because I think there's a lot of confusions, but it has a slipper clutch, right? But people, they say that and they just assume that means the clutch is like gonna slip really easily. They don't, they never say the second part of it, which is it's a slipper gripper. It only slips under decel and actually under acceleration actually locks itself up. Potentially with more power, you're just putting more clamping force on the clutch pack, on the clutch pack. So it might actually be fine. Oddly enough, I've heard a number of people report they're having slipping issues, and I wonder if they're just not adjusting it right, or they just don't understand what slipping is, because I don't know too many people with a 300L that's got as much bang as this one does right now, and I don't have slipping issues. If I don't have slipping issues, I'm not sure why other people are. We'll cross that road when we get there. Worst case scenario, though, if we did have some really bad slipping we couldn't take care of, maybe heavier springs couldn't fix it, I guess we could throw a CBR clutch in, which is what a lot of people have been doing, I believe, very unnecessarily, but that option is there. I'm also considering getting this piston and maybe some other parts internally, WPC treated. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit exciting. We are going to a little bit of an unknown realm here, and it is a little bit like, ah, because, the whole thing with the 300 is it's reliable, you know? It's really, really reliable. And if we screw that up, then the conversation of, well, you should've just got a 450 RL is incredibly valid. I got good reinsurances from uh, from Aerie. I got my own better judgment, and of course, my hopes and dreams that it'll all work out. Those so far don't really seem to count for anything in my life. But yeah, with all that out of the way, there's really only one thing left to do. We gotta start taking it apart. I think my jack needs some oil, it's not going. I got it up. Don't ask. <laughs> I'm trying to make this work the way the internet always says to do it. So you just push, push this down and push it in. Y'all, oh my god, y'all right. You just push it in. I guess I better disconnect the, the O2 sensor. Oh, there we go, okay. I reckon that's a pretty good stopping point. I actually have to get up in the morning and go fix another Honda, CRV though. Good big steps there. Next things are just some of the big stuff. Wiring harness, motor, we'll get down to a rolling chassis. Now I'll have the next video. That's pretty simple. Uh, that video is definitely already out over on Patreon. So go over there and check that out. The Patreon versions are always several videos ahead. Go over there and check out the Discord. Guys, nice. guys, tell everyone tell everyone why they should join the Discord. Join the white, join the join the white, join the Discord. Because it is a very great group of fellows in this. We got Macintosh, who's basically German, so I don't know what you're into, but you're into some weird stuff. You got me, who drives from Minnesota to Texas to go say hi to Jake and just drives back. You got Kurt, who snorts maple syrup because he's Canadian. You got Ribbon, who's 3D Prince. I don't know, but we got someone for everyone. That's why you should join. I like this guy. He's, you're a good promoter, Josh. All right. <laughs> See y'all next video. And don't forget to click the link in the description to get 30% off your first box at Teach Hanley and a free gift. Link in the description.